Right now, beneath the Alps, near the city of Geneva, Switzerland, there is a tunnel. And machinery inside that tunnel sends beams of energy in a vast circle, so big it would take you nearly six hours to walk around it just once. And then it crashes them into one another. That machine is the Large Hadron Collider. It's the world's biggest and most powerful particle accelerator, a multi-billion dollar instrument. And here's the thing, it freaks people out. If you begin to type the words Large Hadron Collider into Google right now, one of the Google searches that'll come out asks whether it can destroy the world. Well, it hasn't done that. That would have been our top story. But as of this week, it has discovered three new particles which could help us learn how our universe was born and what its future looks like. Let's bring in Dr. Sarah Demers to help break this down. Dr. Demers is a professor of physics at Yale University. Dr. Demers, thank you so much for being here. I'm very happy to be here. So let's start with the layman's terms here. Explain to me as simply as you can, what is the Large Hadron Collider and what does it do? It is our largest collider in the world. Um, some people describe it as the world's biggest freezer. Um, it's also the world's biggest vacuum chamber, so it has lots of superlatives. But the goal is to get fundamental particles moving as fast as we possibly can, very, very close to the speed of light, and then we smash them together. You can think about this a little bit like a time machine. We're going back to the conditions that were uh, very soon after the Big Bang. And by doing this, we're able to explore the fundamental particles in the, the makeup of the universe and the way those particles interact with each other. So the goal really is fundamental hey. science. How does it work? And this, I assume, is why this thing costs so many billions of dollars and has brought together scientists from all over the world. You've essentially created a simulation of the early days of the universe here on Earth, and everybody can draw on it from together. Am I right about that? That's right. And it takes all of us. It takes the entire world community to come together in order to make this happen, and actually thousands of us to keep it running and make sense of the data from it. And as I understand it, you have now uh, bumped up into, or I don't know quite what the, the verb is to use here, right? But you have discovered exotic new particles. Tell me about that. What does that mean? It means that we understand quite a bit about the matter that we can see around us. Um, people are familiar maybe with the atoms. You learn about the structure of the atoms. But it's possible when we have access to even higher energies to create particles that aren't around typically in nature. Um, we have to create them in our high energy collisions. And those are the kinds of particles that were only around very early in the universe when there was that much energy density and energy available. So we're able to study those uh, exotic particles that otherwise we wouldn't have access to. And it's surprising how much those kinds of particles can actually teach us about the universe as a whole. Well, connect that for me, right? When we think about trying to, you know, there's, there's what you and I can observe with our eyes and our ears, measure in the ways that, you know, uh, I might think of as the conventional ways to measure things, but you are simulating early conditions that we have never really been able to watch in any real sense before now. So what are the implications of being able to see these particles for the first time? What are you going to do with that information? Well, we have a lot of questions. Uh, there's quite a bit that we've learned about the fundamental particles in the universe, but it seems that every time we learn something, there are more questions that come along with it. Um, so I, I think by creating these, these exotic particles and this matter, we're trying to learn how did we end up with the universe that we have now, um, and what can we expect in terms of the, the way the universe will behave in the future. We have big gaps in terms of our understanding. Um, when we look actually at the entire mass energy content of the universe, it's only about 4% that we can claim to have a, a solid understanding of within our models. So we have really big questions um, that, that mm -hmm. we're trying to answer through these kinds of investigations. A, a physicist once said to me that, that essentially our understanding of the universe is, is mostly built on these sort of theoretical ideas that we've created this kind of rickety structure and then put a bunch of science up on top of it and now we're trying to fill it in underneath. It feels to me like you are in some way, thanks to the Large Hadron Collider, able to, to click in some of these, these sort of structures underneath all of what has been theoretical understanding before now. 
That's absolutely true, and that's a piece of the fun. Um, but even more fun is the fact that the structure that we've built, these, this theoretical model of the universe, we know is incomplete. We know that there are problems with it. So I wouldn't say we're trying to prop it up. I would say we're trying to find the gaps and, and probe those pieces that don't mm. seem to make sense to us so that we can build up a better structure and a better model of how the universe works. And give us the long-term objective here. Let's say you really get to a place where you feel like you understand the history of the universe in this way, really understand the, the fundamental particles, you know, and, and get to a, a complete picture of things. What will they, that make possible for us that we, you know, c don't currently have available to us? Wow, it's hard to even imagine. I, I, I feel so far from that point, it's hard to even imagine standing at that point where I understand the, the fundamental makeup of the universe. Um, but I, I think uh, getting to that point would be just a huge achievement for us as human beings, understanding that uh, aspect of um, you know how the world around us works. It would give us a tremendous amount of information about our future. Uh, we look out at the universe now and we see that it's expanding at an accelerator rating rate. We don't understand why that is. We don't really understand what the evolution of that has been or what will be. So it would give us a sense of where we're headed in terms of the, the universe. It's interesting to think about practical applications of this kind of work. Um, and, and those kinds of things are hard to predict. Because in the history of the field, when we first discovered the electron, for example, uh, that, that was almost at the level of a magic trick in terms of trying to under, you know, understand a new phenomenon that, that, wasn't, um, that wasn't grasped earlier. So it's not really simple to talk about practical implications um, because I don't think we know them. We do know that in doing this work, we're moving forward a lot of understanding and, and pushing computing and uh, different technologies to enable us to do our experiments. So in that way, we're, we're moving forward all kinds of frontiers of knowledge. Well, it's really extraordinary to imagine you all uh, deep underneath the Swiss Alps simulating uh, the earliest days of, of the universe, uh, putting particles together the way that, that really only the universe was able to before now. So extraordinary work you are doing. Dr. Cyril Demers, joining us from Switzerland tonight, thank you so much for your time and your insights. Thank you. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.